All right, folks, got us a 2007. It's a GMC. It's a Yukon. That's a Denali. Uh, I assume it's a 5.3 in there. Could be wrong. Uh, it doesn't run. It doesn't crank. It doesn't do anything. And it's got an inspection that's a couple years overdue, and it's not even registered on the road. <laughs> uh, the guy made the appointment. There may be a lack of communication on my part. Um, but what I was told is that he uh, put an oil pump in it, and since then, uh, it's had electrical trouble, and it's stuck in second gear. That's basically all the notes that I have on it when he made the appointment. I um, tried calling him to see if this is a new symptom. I see there's no Prindle display on the dash. Well, there's a Prindles there, but there's no line under what gear it's in. And uh, again, it doesn't crank, it doesn't do anything. Uh, it was out in my parking lot. The battery was unhooked. I hooked the battery up. Battery seems to have charge on it. You know, you can move the shifter in and out. Windows go up and down, horn honks, that kind of stuff. But that's it. So that's all I know. So let's get after it. Let's give me an idea here. I come in to hook up the Altel. Figure I might better show you. Um, so key on engine off. We do have an engine light, which is good. No Prindle display. Like I say, I don't know if we got a... I don't see a backup camera, service suspension system, put open, what else was there? Park assist off. All right, so, but yeah, when I go to try to start it, you know, nothing happens there. Put it neutral, nothing happens there. Like I said, yeah, we got a horn got headlights you know it seems like we have everything like that you know power windows go up and down so no clicking no nothing what's up miss though brought you a package perishable huh all right well thank you mm -hmm. i'm trying to let it auto id it's not happening so we're going to type in the bin number uh, manually which this tells us basically that there is you know, no, it's going to be a no communication situation. Yeah, there we go. This had been scanned, failed. Which on these, so this is a 6.2. I should have known being that was the denial version. Uh, so just my big fat guess going into it is the suspension control module is rotted out in the back. That's my big fat guess. Um, so anyway, let's figure it out the right way. So I'm going to let it go through a uh, system scan here. I think what we'll find is everything on the high speed data network here is not gonna function as we can see it's all grayed out but everything that runs off the class 2 or the low speed here I think it's class 2 on this is likely gonna function and be tattletailing it they can't see you know stuff on the high speed network so we'll let that finish and then I'll let you guys see what we see it's all done we're gonna go to report we'll skip that uh, supplemental rear passenger presence module erratic lost com with radio Passenger presence, high voltage, low voltage, invalid serial data received. Yeah, it's probably had an airbag light on for a while, I'm guessing. <laughs> uh, driver's door problems, lost count with HVAC. All right, well, we're just going to make note of these. Nothing really. To worry about a lot of history codes and stuff in here those are all history codes but like i say with the battery being unhooked probably had lots of dead batteries and yeah because these are all pass 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 all history codes all right well let's focus on the fact that we have a no com with anything on the high speed network uh, i think uh, probably pattern failures and experience is going to help us with this one pop right in here uh, pin 6 and 14 is what we want to look at for our high-speed can and we can see we have nothing it's at one and a half volts and it's kind of chilling there we're going pin 14 and that's at about I don't know three quarters of a volt I would guess yeah about 700 millivolts and then back on pin 6 and that one's sitting at 1.5 volts. Um, the uh, low speed, I, I don't know what it is, if it's pin two or pin seven, I might, we might have to look this up. But that, that one is talking anyways. Uh, what is it, J1850, is that? 
pin two. No, it's not blinking. There's pin one. Okay, so pin one's flashing at us. All right, and there's where we're communicating on our, our low speed network. Um, so just in case you wanted to see that, so there is comm there, but when we look at our, our regular high speed on pin six and 14, nothing's happening. Uh, like I say, I've seen this enough on these Chevys to know that usually it's just a module that's gone haywire on us. And on the Denali's and the Escalades and stuff, it's typically the suspension module. Sometimes, but not always. I think we did another one of these videos on a Yukon. And I don't recall, I don't remember what we found in that. I looked back in that video. I remember it was a maroon Yukon around the same era. I want to say that. I always probably suspension module on that one too. So let's... Um, before we dive too deep into this, let's just raise it up in the air, give this thing a visual inspection. It looks super rotted from up here. And like I say, if it's been sitting a couple years, boy, that can that can add 10 years to a car pretty quick. Welcome to New York, baby. <laughs> That's where your frame belongs, lady. <laughs> this thing's smoked. Right, she's rotted, boy. Gas lines and everything are ready to explode. She is rough. Solid rust. Yeah, it looks like it got oil sprayed at some point in its life, but wait, can you hardly really turn these wheels? She's rough, man. Cross members are all rotted out. Huh? Thank you. There's our suspension control module. What's left of it? I just left uh, pin six here pulled up on our scope so we can see if only I unplug this if our network comes back to life. The nice part about these being all rotten out is uh, the module comes out nice and easy. Nice and easy. It's got one rot hole through it so that's usually a pretty telltale sign. Looks like somebody's been here before the little lock tab is broke. Oh, bing, 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 listen, bing, bing, bing. Oh, the whole connector fell apart. Oh yeah, somebody's got this thing jammed right full of dielectric grease and stuff, of course. That's what we do. And bingo, bango. There's pin six. There's pin 14. We'll take and uh, get a little more time on your screen here. All right, so we can see we have some data network communications restored. Uh, without even looking at wiring diagram, I do know that up here somewhere on this harness usually is the other half of the resistor that's taped uh, to the harness. But the truck should probably still start and run uh, without it. I'm just, I'm gonna pop that connector apart and put this back together just in case we end up leaving this unplugged. Sometimes it's easier to fix a car with experience than it is actually looking. Of course, nobody really learns anything from this, but yeah, boy, they really got that thing packed right full of grease. Maybe they were trying to fix another problem. Probably the service suspension light that was coming on and off intermittently would be my guess. And I'm pretty sure it wasn't that long ago that we actually did a video on one of these. Nobody ever fixes these. Oh, actually, <laughs> well, this is where your compressor goes, ladies. So yeah, so never mind. So nobody's fixing this one. I was gonna say the compressor is usually rotted out. And I don't know if we ever put up that video. We did one of these where I think I mentioned in the video that it was the first time in all self-made auto history that we actually fixed the air suspension on one of these vehicles. Typically when these things come to me, they're, they're done. It's smoked. You know, it's like this one frame for audit. It's not even worth doing anything with. She junk. And I think the one that we did in that video, I think we just cut the network wires, hooked them together. But uh, anyhow, that was about this. How about we exit out of here? Oops. Oh, oh, gosh, come on. Jeez. Let's go back to our diagnostics. Go to history, and this is the, what done, I think it's the 07. It should be able to talk to the high speed now, even though that resistor is still unhooked in the back. Let's just go fault scan, see if we have communications. Yep, we do. So now our, our ECM is back online. 
TCM's back online. I've got to wait till I hear from the customer to see what he wants to do. I mean, obviously there's no sense in putting this in or you know getting a new one because the compressor's missing and then there's really no sense in fixing this truck because it's completely rotted out. Frame smoked, everything on it's junk. But at least I don't have to pull it back outside with a lawnmower, I guess. Well, it was littered right full of no com codes and all kinds of codes in there. Let's just take in for grins and giggles. Just start it, see if it's got its gears, and then I don't know, it's got to wait for the guy to call back. Oops. All right, we've got our printle display. Ooh. These six twos are so awesome. All right, service suspension system, of course. Yes, works. Battery lights on. Huh? Let's see, can we turn this on? Uh, traction off. Okay, let's try that. Yeah, I was gonna say pipe on. Beautiful. It doesn't seem to be stuck in second gear as he was mentioning. Alright, yeah. Made a shift at least all the way up to fourth there. Ooh, sounds like there's some rust flying out of the back. Let's get her to stop. Make sure your wheels are stopped. Well, I guess that's it. I'm not going to go any further with it. It's obviously not charging. So, wait to hear from this fella. It's kind of a short, silly video, folks, but it just goes to show that sometimes diagnosing stuff, I guess, if you will, diagnosing, <laughs> we use that term lightly here, uh, or guessing at what a problem is, can be helpful if you are familiar with some pattern failures of a particular brand or symptom or, you know, however you want to use the word there that I'm not using right. Uh, the fact of the matter is this is probably the eighth or tenth one of these that I've seen come in with the same symptom and the same exact problem. So something like this is pretty easy now if this had a spare tire in it and it was you know not a New York car and it wasn't all rotted out we would approach this a lot different but being that we've seen under the hood like oh this thing looks pretty rotted under the hood it's going to be smoked underneath which we saw you know the frames rotted cross members rotted brakes gas lines it's it's junk cars junk. So then we could go right for that thing. It takes a you know a minute. You guys seem to unplug it and see if we're right. If it wasn't, then we're gonna stop right there and do our our diagnosis like we should, uh, you know the proper way. But sometimes pattern failures really help you and uh, help you not waste a lot of time. Uh, nothing more to really say on this. I'm gonna wait till I hear from the guy. I assume he's just gonna have us cut the wires, loop them together, and you know adios muchacho, and uh, just send them down the road. But I don't know what he's going to do with the truck. Probably have to get a lick them, stick them somewhere. Somewhere's other in my shop, I'll tell you that. And then, I don't know if he's going to drive it, but like I say, with all the brake lines, gas lines, stuff ready to blow, it's just going to be an endless, you know, money pit, not to mention the frames rotted. So, that's it. Comment section, folks. Questions, comments, concerns, the entity, the Facebook. You know where we're at, folks. Not on TikTok, though. Jerk. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.